I think this is the ninth game of conference play, so we're almost at that at midway point. Uh, we travel to uh, play against an A&M team, a team we play home and home each and every year. Uh, and looking forward to uh, uh, a game that's going to be uh, uh, highly uh, anticipated. Uh, their team, that uh, size is their biggest advantage. They shoot it and go get it. And we've got to be able to rebound by committee. We've got to be able to defend. Uh, Davis, outstanding player. Williams, uh, he's a high ri riser. The Gilder kid has played well against us in the last couple of years. Uh, he's played really, really well. And we've got to do a better job on him. They've added some guards. So it's the same team from last year, but they've added some uh, some pretty good talent in the guards. Starks and uh, the Wilson kid. Uh, uh, they're a very good basketball team. And so. Uh, they hadn't had everybody together until here recently, and they're playing a lot better now, and uh, I know we're going to get their best shot. So, uh, again, going to College Station is not a uh, very easy place to win. Uh, uh, they've done a good job in terms of taking care of the home court. I think they lost a couple of games, one in conference play, uh, a couple in conference play. So, uh, And we've got to play, play a lot better than we played even in the last game in Oklahoma State. Uh, we've got to be able to shoot the basketball well. We've got to be able to continue to defend. Uh, more importantly, keep them off the boards. I think second chance points are going to be big in this game and also getting to the free throw lines. And, and, and on the road, you got to make shots. We got to be able to shoot the basketball and, and get off to a much better start. You know, those slow starts are the things that are really kind of kind of hindered us a little bit. So we've got to come out, uh, uh, survive the first punch, and punch back. Yeah, Mike, you know, and them had a great non-conference. They were ranked number five, 11 and one. Had some big wins like over West Virginia and Southern Cal. But now they, I think they're two and seven there last night. What, what do you make of what's happened to them? And, and are they just kind of hard team to figure out? Well, they had a lot of guys in and out. You got to remember they had a lot of guys in and out. And uh, whether it be guys hurt or guys be suspended, and uh, now it just seems like they're starting to, to get all those pieces together. Uh, uh, so I expect the team that's going to be playing better than they have been in, early in the year. Uh, it's you know, like I said, when you got newcomers that are coming on board, and, and a lot of the newcomers are guards, uh, but the guys that you know, uh, the Davis kid, the whole kid who was hurt quite a bit, he was he was out quite a few games, and even Gilder just got back here recently from a, from an injury. But but when you got new guys and old guys, you put them together, it takes. It's a different year. It's a different team. And so uh, I'm sure they're finding that, that chemistry, their roles, and understanding that. And uh, uh, they're deeper than they have been in the past. I know that for a fact. So the guard play, I think, has improved. Uh, when you got a guy like Williams, a guy that can go get your double-double any time, every night. Davis, a guy that can get a double-double. Uh, uh, Treacher, Ramo, Ram, what's the name? Morelis. Huh? Morelis. 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 Just call him Tony. Huh? No, I ain't gonna call him Tony. Morales, uh, good good player. And as I said, Starks, they've added some good players. Caldwell uh, and the Wilson kid. So it's a team that that added added depth. The flag kid. Uh, uh, so, uh, but again, it's just getting all those pieces to come together, Bob. That's all. And and we know our league is is really really good. And if you don't, you're not ready, when you don't come out ready, man, you could you can lose some games quite easily. And you look at our schedule even here, a, a basket here, a play there, it changes the dynamics of our, of our, uh, of our record at this point in time. Oh, on the road, those slow starts you've had on the road, is it simply just getting the defense to transition to offense, or is it a mixture of both that you've got to really get going to get that game I started? I just think we got to come out, you know, we can't come out on our toes. I think we got to come out, I mean, can't come, yeah, we can't come out, we got to come out and really come at it. Can't come out on our heels. I think we got to come play on our toes, and we got to come back and punch back. Uh, you got to be able to score. We've had opportunities whether we get to the free throw line or, or get some uh, easy buckets. Uh, I think we got to establish an inside, maybe start inside and, and then coming out. Uh, but you got to shoot the basketball. You got to put it in the hole, and and your defense is really it's got to be the key. I think that's got to be the key throughout the game. And so I said we we know the game is 40 minutes, and you know obviously that, that half you want to win. You want to win that that second half. Uh, but we've got to come out and, uh, and really come out much more aggressive, I think. When you look back on um, Dustin's game, he had the rebounds, he had nine points. He was also, I think, the main defender on the first shot right at the end. What, was that maybe his best game? I, I think, up, you know, when we talk about this year, with, without a doubt. I thought he was active in all phases of the game. 
uh, whether he's passing the ball. I think he even had some nice assists in the game, uh, some singles that led to assists. Uh, played 25 minutes, but it was efficient basketball. And that's we expect that out of him. You know, I love to see him even do more in the middle of that zone that, that we played against in Oklahoma State. I mean, he was open quite a bit right there in the middle of the zone. But I think his just being real active defensively, fixing things on defense, uh, rebound the basketball. I mean, he was what, one rebound, uh, one point away from a double-double. He had 10 rebounds. So uh, I'll say it's, this year I think is one of his better performances. That's coming off a guy that, like I say, he didn't play an old Miss game. And so there's back-to-back -back games. And that's as a coach, you want consistency from guys. What are they going to bring in night in and night out? You have a technical call on a player. Do you – Check with the conference office, check with Jalen, like what happened, what led to that, and can you speak to, you know, what happened? I don't even want to talk about it. I do, I do, I, I, I do my investigation. That's, that's what we're doing right now. Hey, Mike, you started Adriel, but he, I think he only played three minutes and he didn't play much the game before, but you've been starting him. Is he just not giving you what you're looking for or maybe just other guys are doing better? What's kind of going on with Adriel? Well, we, you know, we, got, we got some guys that are in that position that, you know, each night each, some guys bring something different. You know, Adriel brings, uh, I think, a level of toughness. I think, uh, you know, in that particular game they went zone. So uh, they kind of left him open. And... Uh, but he's got to find his niche in terms of trying to help other people get open. Uh, uh, but Cook, I thought Cook came in and gave us some great minutes. Uh, Dustin Thomas came in and played great minutes, and that's why you got a bench. You know, uh, starting to me is uh, it's not like you guys. You know, you think starting is a big, big thing, but it, it's it's the playing time. That's what you want. You want the playing time. And, uh, and when guys go out there, I want them to play efficient minutes. So, but hopefully, Adro can give us something uh, as we get ready to play Texas in him. We, we need him. We need his energy. We need his athletic ability out there. Uh, defensively, he's really, really good up on the front of the press, rebound the basketball, finishing at the basket. So we've got to get him really ready as we go down this stretch here. We've got uh, uh, 10 games left. And it's going to be important to get guys that, uh, that can come out and really help our basketball team get them ready to play and, and play some quality minutes. I guess Gafford had played so well and then struggled a game or two. How much did that tip in, do you think, help him kind of hit, hit his stride again for uh, next game? I'm hoping it's big for him, I, you know, because he sat there and all of a sudden now you're, you're in when it's really, really significant. Uh, it's a big, big moment. And I thought he came in and captured that moment. And uh, I know he had a big smile on his face after the game. So hopefully that'll, that'll get him uh, more ready as we go down this stretch here. You know, he, right now guys are doubling him. And so he's got to be a guy that's a willing passer. You know, a lot of time he's trying to fight through it and uh, whether it's scoring, but holding on to it a little longer. Uh, but go ahead and move the basketball. But we got to establish him. We, we got to establish him, uh, whether it be on screen and rolls, whether it be running the floor in our half court sets, we got to give him the ball. And he's got to be a willing passer. He's a very, very good passer. Uh, but hopefully that'll be something that can get him going, Nate. Uh, sometimes you, you have a, a, a certain moment, something happens, a trigger goes off. Uh, uh, and, and maybe that'll be one. When you look back at the, the week Daryl had to, to help you come from behind in those two wins and, and get the SEC co player of the week, can you just reflect back at what he was able to do for you guys last week? Well, you know, congratulations, Daryl. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him, excited for him. I, I just think he's playing some of his better basketball right now. Uh, I think he's a lot more relaxed. Uh, uh, not only that, he's doing more than just scoring for us. Uh, he's playing efficient basketball. He's playing team basketball. Uh, he's rebounding at a higher level. He's assisting at a higher level. Uh, uh, and, and it just seems like he's having, he's just having fun out there. I mean, he's, to me, he's starting to brace some of those moments I talk about. You know, sometimes guys can shy away from it. Uh, but we know he's an impact player. He's a starter on our basketball team. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, but I, you know, uh, I'm glad to see him continue to play. And I think he can still play even better than what he's playing right now. It's, just, it's, it's big for our team. Coach, uh, how much have you seen Trey Thompson's offensive rebounding ability improve this season? Uh, Trey always has had that knack, uh, you know, getting some playing time, being in the game uh, at some of those pivotal moments. Uh, and we're seeing him use, you know, the, the size he has. I mean, he's one of those guys, he creates space and uh, he's got a great feel for the game. I mean, he can go get the ball. And uh, one of the things I've been getting on about, he, you know, he touches a lot of offensive rebounds with one hand. I just go get it with two hands. And so uh, those possessions are very, very important. 
And when he gets them, whether he scores or, or kick it out, uh, those are important plays, that extra possession. And, uh, and, and it may come down to that one possession that he gets uh, for our basketball team. But Trey is, uh, is really playing well. You just can see his basketball IQ, and, and he's, he's leading out there on the floor. He's really, really talking to these guys, getting them in the right positions, and uh, just making plays. Hey, Mike, you, you look at a and I think they're like a minus 3.4 on turnover margin. Obviously, forcing turnovers, that's one of the things you guys like to do. How, how do you see that part of the game playing out? Well, I'm sure Billy's going to have those guys prepared. I mean, uh, we're going to do what we do, and, and I'm sure they're going to do what they do in terms of uh, attacking and rebounding the basketballs. Uh, but we, we can't play a half-court game. And uh, so we've got to be able to be disruptive defensively and uh, get in the passing lanes, uh, be quick to the ball. Uh, more important, keep them off the glass, limit them to one shot, and make sure it's a contested shot. So it's going to be a tough ball game. Uh, it's, it's a great challenge, but it's a, it's a great opportunity for us to go and, and play against a team that, uh, as you alluded to, they were in the top ten early in the year. And, uh, but those players hadn't gone anywhere. Like I said, it's just they had some guys that were out, and now they're starting to get it back together. So they're a very good basketball team. Hey, Coach, well, you know, with the SEC winning the big, the challenge against the Big 12, how does it feel to kind of be like a part of that with the increase of the value of the SEC and everything just going up right now for the SEC? I mean, that's kudos to all the coaches and the uh, commissioner and you know, everyone involved with, with the – with basketball in the SEC, uh, I think it was a concerted effort by everyone, you know, uh, to participate in it. And knowing you know, each year, I think it got better. You know, the first couple of years it probably wasn't uh, to our liking, but last year it was it was split even. And then this year we took it another step. So uh, it's going to be year to year, but uh, uh, but that says a lot about you know the commitment and and uh, what guys are doing with their team. We've got some great coaches in our league and. Uh, and that, that gave us an opportunity to, uh, to stick our chest out as we play against a, another conference. And, uh, and you'll see some of those matchups again once the season's over with. Hey, hey Mike, um, you guys obviously had a great road win a week ago. Um, how does that help you guys for this, this next road game in terms of you know, having maybe a little added confidence and feel, feeling good about things? Well, you build on it, Bob. You build on it from the standpoint, a confidence standpoint. What did you do to earn that? You know, it wasn't given to us. It was earned in a double overtime. Uh, I thought we defended well, uh, especially going down the stretch. Uh, we didn't panic. We played with poise. Uh, we took advantage of, 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 of our strengths and, uh, and tried to eliminate our weaknesses, which, you know, a lot of people would say rebound the basketball. And, uh, and even in that game, you know, it was back and forth. It was a game that went back and forth. And I just thought our – uh, our experience of being poised, more importantly, was real, real big. And that's what you got to have on the road. You got to have poise. And you got to be able to make shots. You know, the first half in that game, uh, Barford kept us in it. The next half, here come Macon, uh, you know, playing awful well. Uh, but we got to get some other guys to do some other things for us, too. It can't just be those two guys. We got to get Daniel going. Uh, we got to continue to get the performance that, like Dustin Thomas just gave us. Uh, C.J. Jones, he's a very, very capable guy of, of really coming in and scoring for us. Uh, but the thing I like about it is that the, the defensive mindset that we're having right now, we're, we're, we're really, really excited about stopping people. 